Chapter 5, Elephant Babies in America. The first elephant baby born in America was born to Babe. The circus had to, it was in St. Joe. The circus had to leave town to perform. By the time they came back two days later, the baby was dead. Babe had no idea about being a mother. She had no idea. She had never seen anything. And people didn't know. People had no idea. It would be decades still before people knew how long a gestation was in elephants. They were guessing it was maybe 14 months or I mean, they didn't know. It's actually 22 months. And they didn't know when a baby elephant was born, if it drank from its trunk or if it drank from its mouth. They, they couldn't figure out any of that. So the second elephant born in America was also born to Babe a few years later after another 22-month gestation. And this one was named Columbus. And Columbus was born in 1880. He was born at the Winter Quarters in Philadelphia, and they made big news out of this. You know, they, you know, they list the people, and they got a big naming competition, and what are we going to do? And finally, um, Columbia was the name because that's sort of, you know, Columbia is the U.S. And, and uh, the babe, right after she's born, babe picks up this newborn baby that came out of her, aunt, picked her up with her trunk, and threw her 20 yards threw her. This was not a kindly act. She wouldn't let her come near her teeth, so they had to put funnels up to her breasts and nurse her, and then with a long tube that went into Columbus's mouth. And somehow, this baby elephant actually survived being raised that way, and did live. So Columbus was owned by a guy named James Bailey. And James had changed his last name to Bailey, but he was actually a cousin of Hakaliah Bailey way back in the first circus in America. And he knew that this baby elephant was his key to beating Barnum. So he marketed him like crazy. He was and promoted to women for the very first time because here is the mother and child. So it was a completely new take. And Barnum knew that he was that he really didn't have a way to beat this. He was trying to, uh, he would send his men ahead with, with leaflets ahead of where Bailey Circus was showing up and with leaflets saying, don't see this circus, wait for the better one, come in later, P.T. Barnum. And uh, but Bailey, they were turning out. It, it was just this baby elephant was, was too hard to pass up. And uh, Barnum said, it draws all creation and the ladies seem half crazy with it. Barnum offered Bailey $100,000 to buy Little Columbia. And Bailey said no. And uh, he used that as an advertisement to see that Barnum really wants our elephant because he's offering to buy it. And then Barnum had this ad made of uh, this, this drawing of, of Babe the mother, and he was trying to show how what a terrible mother she'd been. It's actually a rather cruel little picture. But um, it's completely misinterpreted by the people who see it. And Barnum and Bailey is going, oh, look, no, he's again jealous of our elephant. So by 1880, Barnum made another offer. And this time he offered to make a merger. And this is what we're going to have. We're going to have the Barnum, Bailey, and Hutchison's Consolidated Great London Circus and Sanger's Royal British Menageries and the International Allied Show also known as The Greatest Show on Earth. Barnum Circus alone had 51 cars, 316 people, 149 horses and ponies, 20 racing camels, 10 elephants, 10 giraffes, 3 Nubian cattle, and a black rhino that they said was hairy. Again, I want to describe the circus to you. Let me take a moment to show you this book. I'm getting a lot of my information for this from this book, which really tells me how terrible we treated elephants in America. So this is now the combined Barnum and Bailey Circus. There's seven monster United shows included a museum, a racing track, two menageries, and three circuses presented for the first time in three rings, all packed into a tent that held 10,000 people. It launched its first season in 1881 included 57 performances, many of them shown simultaneously. 
The Hippodrome, which is the oval track inside the tent, was a half mile long and it was filled with elephants, horses and jockeys and ostriches and giraffes. There were Egyptians, Romans, Zulus, a Scotsman in a kilt doing high jumps, clowns, dancers and aerial acrobats. The number of daring horseback riders, the vast army of gymnasts, the scores of clowns, the multitudes of jugglers, aerial performers, tussler, tumblers, wrestlers, and special artists that appeared in the course of an evening were positively bewildering globe the New York world. The sideshows included Myrtle Corbin, the four-legged girl from Texas who really was a four-legged woman, Che Ma, the Chinese rebel dwarf who was the son of a Jewish merchant from London, and Major Adam, a man so small that all little men are giants by his side. They had giants from Arabia, China, France, and Ireland, and Texas, and an animal man who Barnum claimed had been trapped during a guerrilla hunting expedition near the Gambian River in West Africa. The show confounded the senses. William Batchelor, the champion leaper of the world, did a double somersault over 15 elephants. And Madame Zazel shot out of a cannon and did her famous eagle swoop. Still, in all of this, no act was bigger than Columbia. That was what people came to see. She wandered restlessly around an enclosure, wrote the New York Sun, switching her diminutive tail, waving her little trunk, and winking her small eyes in a curiously ludicrous imitation of her mother, who stood chained and constantly weaving from side to side. The next baby elephant was born to Barnum and was named Bridgeport after he was born in their Bridgeport wintering uh, quarters. They first named it America, but then they decided that, oh, if we name it Bridgeport, the people of the town will like, give us some money and help us do this. So Bridgeport was born in 1882 to an elephant, a young elephant named Queen, who they thought was just a terrible and scary elephant, and um, they were quite afraid of her. So as she was uh, she was ready to give birth, the, the head keeper of the elephants ordered her to be tied up, and she was forced down onto her side, which is not where she should be for giving birth. And uh, there were men holding these big ropes and pulling from all directions to keep her there, and... You know, the birth starts happening, and finally the guy who's running it realizes that she should not be bound, and he tells the men to let go, and they're, like, afraid, and finally some of them do, and they run away, and Queen jumps up and gives birth and instantly becomes the, the perfect mom. I mean, she, unlike Babe, Queen knows what to do. She just takes care of this little baby, she brings him to her breast, and she raises him, and she is a great mother after that. Pritchford only lived for four years. He died in 1886, and he too was taxidermied. I think Barnum liked to taxidermy all of his elephants, and he was put on display next to Jumbo in uh, a museum that Barnum had now set up on the Tufts University campus. This little baby elephant, his tusks were two inches long when he died. The next elephant that came along was first named Abraham Lincoln, before they decided that Baby Bunting was a better name. So Baby Bunting made his first appearance in 1908 when he was four weeks old, 200 pounds, which is underweight, and about three feet tall. And the crowning attraction of the largest menagerie in the world and the prize exhibit in the biggest herd of elephants in America is how Baby Bunting was touted. In his first 200 days, Baby Bunting performed 148 times in 30 states, plus the District of Columbia, plus a Canadian province. They went to winter quarters with the troop in 1908, and he dies sometime within two months before he turns one year old. There's no mention made. That's often true. When an elephant dies, they, they sort of, you just know it because he's not mentioned anymore. Of the elephant calves that were born in, the, in 1900, none of them lived to be more than a year old. None of them. Columbia, the first one, was actually born in 1880, and she lived to be almost 30. But uh, none of the other ones lived. It was maternal neglect mainly. They stepped on them, they rolled over on them, and all that. So here's a little telling. There was... Princess Alice at the Hoggle Zoo in Salt Lake City, for instance, 
gave birth to four calves after baby Bunting had been born. Baby Hutch was the first in 1912, then baby Tambon in 1914, Little Miracle in 1916, and Prince Utah in 1918. Like Babe, Princess Alice was a completely dysfunctional mother. Baby Hutch died at the age of 42 days after Alice knelt on him, leaving him flat as a pancake. Baby Tambon survived only one day, and Little Miracle survived for almost five months. The greatest hope, though, had been for Prince Utah, who was 50 days shy of his first birthday when Princess Alice rolled over him. There would not be another elephant born in America for 42 years. So after this 42-year gap, there was a big male Asian elephant that came over from Siam, and his name was Thongla. And he was brought over by uh, Morgan and Fern Berry, and they were a couple. He was uh, Morgan was a big ele elephant handler, and uh, but they regularly took trips over to Asia or sometimes to Africa to get animals to bring back for the zoos in North America. So he had Thongla, who was this. Uh, he was already mature when he came over. And they also had a younger female elephant named Belle, who was eight, and an even younger female elephant named Pet, also Asian elephants. And, uh, you know, he showed them around Oregon, and he showed them up to Seattle, and, and uh, Barry uh, worked at the Seattle Zoo, which actually did not have a resident population of elephants at that time, and also at the Portland Zoo. And the Portland Zoo had two female Asian elephants. And they all got along. So when Barry and his wife went back over on another, you know, collecting trip to Asia, they would leave their elephants at the Portland Zoo with the other two. So he did this in um, went on another collecting trip in 1960. And no one knew that Belle was three months pregnant when they left. So it wasn't born until April of 1962. And in 1962, after five hours of labor, Belle had a baby elephant. And the city went wild. Portland went wild for this baby elephant. And the Chicago Zoo was like, oh, my God, we want that mother and baby. So they offered $30,000, $50,000, $50,000 they offered to, uh, to Morgan Berry to buy his elephant mother and baby. And the city of Portland is like, no, you can't do it. It's our baby. And, and actually, Berry would rather it stay in Portland. So he told Portland, if you can raise $30,000, Belle can stay. In, uh, in the Portland, and I won't take her to Chicago. And so people did, you know, children were giving pennies, and the radio station ran a thing, and they had this deal, well, if we, you know, you can buy a pound, you can buy parts of, of Bell, you know, uh, $5 a pound, and if you get so many of them, we can get all this money. Anyway, by the time the deadline came, they'd only raised $18,000. They were short of the $30,000. But again, Barry really wanted the elephants to be able to stay in Portland. So he took an IOU he, for the balance, and... Then he also said, well, you know, you can have Belle and her baby, but you can also have Thongla and you can have Pet. And then, next thing you knew is all the other elephants were also pregnant. And so, that October, Rosie, who was one of the resident elephants in the Portland Zoo, she had a baby. And the year after that, Tiwa, who was the other elephant that was resident in the Portland Zoo, she had a baby. And finally, the little one, the five-year-old, who is now a six- or seven-year-old, Pet too young, but she had a baby. So the Portland Zoo went from having two elephants to having eight elephants within the course of a year. Packy, who was that first elephant that was, that's what she was named, that's what the town named her, Packy after Pachyderm. He was the first, first generation elephant in America to actually have offspring of his own. And uh, he sired seven, and three of them survived.